Because I know this family is so close that they stand by each other in the same way law enforcement families stand with each other. And that through her respectful communication, she has expectations that we should all live by. And I know that she learned that from her brother. Therefore, I know him. dedication reflected your commitment and these efforts are unlike that of any other profession. It is a bond that cannot be broken. Deputy Ruiz will forever be a link in this unbreakable bond. When I arrived at the hospital, I saw our deputies as he stood guard over Deputy Ruiz as the medical staff cared for him. And there's this naive belief that law enforcement professionals become hardened over time, less compassionate, numb to emotion. Nothing could be further from the truth. 
These battle-tested men and women are strong under duress and functional in a dysfunctional environment, yet they are caring and compassionate, concerned and vulnerable, and always present when human life is at risk because they care. And they cared very deeply for this man who stood by their side in the face of danger at every shift and on every call. I was in the hospital room as a squad and a sergeant visited one last time to say goodbye. They held his hand and they wiped his face. They prayed over him and they cried. These strong hard and often stoic deputies were vulnerable and raw because this was the most honest show of respect for their brother who they loved. These law enforcement professionals gave their fallen brother the greatest compliment because that's who he was to them. That is who Deputy Ruiz is to this organization. He's a member of our family and will forever remain in our hearts. It's for these experiences that I know Deputy Juan Johnny Ruiz. It's because his family and friends are a reflection of the man, the son, the brother, the uncle, and the friend. To my law enforcement family across the nation, many people believe the choice to pursue a career in law enforcement is with this understanding that you may sacrifice your life. Some say it's the cost of doing business. This apathy sends a message as though you are expendable. I must tell you with absolute conviction, you are not expendable. You are irreplaceable. In an effort to combat fear in the face of danger, recognizing that you are mortal, you put on the gun, the star, and the badge, the vest and the uniform, and you convince yourself that you're invincible. But you're not. You are absolutely courageous. Deputy Johnny Ruiz was courageous. He is irreplaceable, and he will forever inspire us to put on the gun and the star and the vest and the uniform in the face of danger, and we will continue to answer the call. For if not us, then who? It's my responsibility to remind this community that our efforts must be a part of an unspoken promise, a fair and equitable partnership. We in law enforcement will sacrifice so that those in the community may see, sleep soundly at night and safely. We only ask that the community we serve appreciate that we are human and that they must have enough, hum have enough humility to support law enforcement even when we stumble. Because I assure you, we will strive to be deserving this privileged authority. But in return, we only ask for gratitude. Because this is a sacrifice. And as a small gesture on their part, to give us the strength to walk with pride and confidence as we face danger and often combat evil. I don't believe this is too much to ask. Deputy Ruiz gave the ultimate sacrifice with the hope of this promise. He faced danger, fought evil, and although it appears evil won that day, I assure you it did not. For in the Bible, Romans chapter 8, verse 28 states, All things work together for good to them that love, the God, love God, to them that are called according to his purpose. Evil did not defeat Deputy Ruiz on that day, and evil will not defeat us today. Evil may have taken his mortal form, but yet with his ultimate sacrifice, Deputy Ruiz made even more substantial sacrifice. He lost his life so that others may live. His family made a selfless act of donating his organs so that many others will have the chance to live on and represent his legacy. In his last act, he saved more lives. Deputy Ruiz loves his God, and his sacrifice was for a greater good. And we must accept this truth and honor him, for he is a hero. To my brothers and sisters in law enforcement, I would like to close by sharing one last scripture to remind you our work is not yet done, yet we are not alone in this fight against evil. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, let the mighty strength of the Lord make you strong. Put on all the armor that God gives you so that you can defend yourself against the devil's tricks. We are not fighting against humans. We are fighting forces and authorities and against rulers of darkness and powers of the spiritual world. So put on all the armor that the Lord gives you. Then when that evil comes, you will defend yourself. And when the battle is over, you will be standing firm. This battle continues, but we will forge on. Deputy Juan Johnny Ruiz will be with us in spirit, and he will be at the side of the Lord. May God bless you and keep you safe as you sacrifice for the safety of others. Godspeed, Deputy Ruiz. You will no longer be weary. And burdened. 
Lord will give you rest. Thank you. those of you who don't know me, I am Dave Bowen, and I can proudly say I was Johnny's partner and friend. It is an incredible honor to be asked to come up here and speak this morning. We knew him as Rocket. I first met Johnny while attending the academy. Johnny was once ahead of me. So we would pass in the locker room and occasionally do workouts with his class. Of course, my class would win. We would have small talk in the locker, and after the academy, we went our different ways. Went to two different districts, but every once in a while, we would attend a training class together, and on breaks, we'd use that time to catch up and talk shop. He would talk about District 2, I would talk about District 7, and then we'd go on our way. When I arrived in District 2, I was bounced between several shifts and squads. Also, during that same time, I had several training classes to attend and a couple vacations, so I never really got a chance to know many of the guys in District 2. That changed when I was arrived on Squad 2. <clears throat> we have assigned beats, and I was assigned Adam 231, and Johnny was Adam 233, beat partners. Johnny made a point for my very first shift with him to get me up to speed on how District 2 operates. He's like, it's a large beast. I came from District 7, which was a lot smaller district. From that very first day in the parking lot as we wait for cars from the night shift, he gave me his phone number and he's like, Johnny, it's good to meet you finally. We never had a formal introduction. After that, I think we went on every call together. In this last six weeks, I can't think of going on a call without Johnny. Johnny really took the time to show me the area, all the back roads, dirt roads like you could not find on a map, and introduced me to all the locals. For whatever reason, Johnny knew all the locals. Every morning we'd load up, wait for one another to get logged in, and head to QT. He'd get his coffee, his water, and a snack, and I'd grab caffeine. For a few days stretch, Johnny and I answered several calls for vehicle accidents. Maybe Johnny really liked taking pictures of these cars because we'd usually arrive on scene and within minutes of one another, he'd, quick, he'd be quick to whip out his phone and tell me, hey, I'll take the pictures for you. And then when you're ready, I'll start your tow sheet. I think that was a discreet way to say, Dave, you're taking this report. Usually only happened during accidents, so maybe Johnny just wanted me to get really good at accident reports, or he just did not care for them. Either way, I'll miss his photography skills. <clears throat> In between calls, we would chat about football. I won't hold it against him that he is a Raiders fan. We would chat about family, and it quickly showed how we loved him so much. You were his everything. I'd brag about my wife and kids while he'd brag about his niece. We both put family first, and law enforcement was a career that started later in life for both of us. Before you guys say anything, we're seasoned, we're not old. As most of you can understand, my social media has been filled with stories, fundraisers, thoughts, prayers, but one social media post really sank in due to how true of a statement it was. I'm not gonna share who wrote this, but you know who you are, and I hope you don't mind me sharing this again. It goes something like this. I knew this man personally, and I can tell you, he was one of the most patient and kind people you could come across. 
He came to work every day with a true desire to make an impact, and he did. Such true words. <clears throat> One of the questions often asked during times like this is, why would you or anyone want to be a police officer? I think of Johnny and a scripture he once mentioned. In Isaiah, where Isaiah appeared before Jesus and answered a calling no matter how difficult the task was, and in that scripture the Lord asked, whom should I send as a messenger to my people? Who will go for us? Isaiah simply said, Lord, I will go. Send me, and that's what you have. You have men and women answering that calling, saying, Lord, send me. That was Johnny. Next time I put my duty belt, my vest, my badge on, log in as Adam 231, my heart will be heavy, but it will be also full as I had the distinct pleasure of working and getting to know Johnny to squad two. We will wear our new patch with honor and dignity, representing Johnny and know he'll always be with us. Johnny, I miss you, buddy. Your MCSO family will carry on your legacy. To the Ruiz family, we are here for you. Johnny, we'll take it from here. Good morning, everybody. On behalf of the entire Ruiz family, I would like to thank you all for being here and for your tremendous support during this difficult time, especially his brothers and sisters from, his, from the Maricopa County Sheriff's Office. We're extremely touched with the outpour of love and support, and I know Johnny would have been honored and greatly moved as well. I am Frank, a deputy and Deputy Johnny Ruiz was my little brother. This week has been tough for us. Johnny was the youngest of the family. He was her baby brother. Johnny was born June 24, 1976 in Hermosillo, Sonora, Mexico. And he was four years old when our parents immigrated us to the United States. He was the glue that kept us all together. He was always there for all of us and all of our children. He always made time for others, especially his family. Now that Johnny has passed, there will be a hole in our lives. Life just feels different without him. I would like to take this time to celebrate Johnny's life and look back at some of the many fond memories we as family have had with him, beginning with how proud and excited he was when he announced that he was accepted to the Maricopa County Sheriff. I remember him telling me how hard the academy was, and I told him that if his cranky old brother, me, could have get through boot camp for the Marine Corps, he could have make it through the, to the, through the academy. Johnny was so happy at his graduation, and we were all so proud to see him achieving his dream. Johnny was a man of faith, honor, and values. He never took himself too seriously. Everyone who knew him, knew they could always help, always depend on him. 
and he seems to know what everyone needs at any given moment. If needed to laugh, he was there. If you needed to yell, he was there. If you needed to move, he was there every single time. During one of my many, many moves, that Johnny was always helped me with. We tried and failed to move a mattress. He was confused why everybody or everyone on the freeway was staring at us. And suddenly he yelled, look, the mattress is waving to everybody. <laughs> we were all impressed with, with how serious he took his role as an uncle. It was like having a new man when he interacted with our children. Johnny was a fun uncle. He knew when to play with his sobrinos and when to comfort them. He has left big shoes to fill. Johnny was a great brother too, but has a terrible t taste in beers. He loved black and tan in IPAs. He really loved to make us taste all his beers and watch our bitter beer face. Lastly, Johnny was a man of growth. He always tried to his best to learn new ways to include everyone and how to support the community he served. Being in law enforcement was Johnny's dream. He wanted to serve to the absolute best of his abilities. Johnny's passion to learn his ability to care and his desire to protect should be what every public servant should strive to be. Thank you again for everyone's support during this difficult time. Cherish your loved ones and live life like there is no tomorrow. Thank you.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Juan died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery your servant Juan, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. 
be seated. Lectura del libro de las lamentaciones. Me han arrancado la paz y ya no me acuerdo de la dicha. Pienso que se me acabaron ya las fuerzas y la esperanza en el Señor. Fíjate, Señor, en mi pesar, en esta amarga hiel que me envenena. Apenas pienso en ello, me invade el abatimiento. Pero apenas me acuerdo de ti, me lleno de esperanza. La misericordia del Señor nunca termina y nunca se acaba su compasión. Al contrario, cada mañana se renuevan. Qué grande es el Señor, yo me digo. El Señor es la parte que me ha tocado en herencia y en Él y en el Señor pongo mi esperanza. El Señor es bueno con aquellos que en Él esperan, con aquellos que lo buscan. Es bueno esperar en silencio la salvación del Señor, la palabra del Señor. Te alabamos, Señor. Lectura de la segunda carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Hermanos y hermanas, sabemos que, aunque se desmorone esta morada terrena, que nos sirve de habitación, Dios nos tiene preparada en el cielo una morada eterna, no construida por manos humanas. 
Por eso tenemos confianza, aunque sabemos que mientras vivimos en el cuerpo, estamos desterrados, lejos del Señor. Caminamos guiados por la fe, sin ver todavía. Estamos, pues, llenos de confianza y preferimos salir de este cuerpo para vivir con el Señor. Por eso procuramos agradarle, en el destierro o en la patria, porque todos tendremos que comparecer ante el tribunal de Cristo para recibir el premio o el castigo por lo que hayamos hecho en esta vida. La palabra del Señor. Te la damos, Señor. resurrección y la vida dice el Señor el que crea en mí nunca morirá The Lord be with you and with your spirit A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. It is my great privilege to extend a warm welcome to everybody joining us here today, and on behalf of the whole St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic community, to extend to uh, Deputy Ruiz's family our condolences, uh, our sympathies, most especially our love. It's also my honor to offer that same, um, those same condolences to Sheriff Penzone, especially to those in Deputy Ruiz's unit, as well to every single uh, person who serves in law enforcement and to all those who serve in our community, whether present here in person or joining us via live stream, welcome. Thank you for your presence here today, and, and may God bless each and every one of you as you say goodbye to your family, your friend, your brother. We all know that death is part of everyone's life, but it seems nothing can truly prepare us for it when it comes so suddenly, without time to prepare, without time to say what needs to be said. Jesus calls death a thief. For Jesus, death is a kind of criminal because it comes unbidden, unwelcome, and it takes something precious, the precious gift of life. Death has indeed stolen Deputy Ruiz from us. It robbed him of the gift of life. 
And even more, death tries to rob us of our peace, it tries to take from us our hope, tempting us to think that evil and violence are more powerful than goodness and love. Of course, here in this house of God, you know, we know that Christians don't deny the power of the thief that Jesus calls death, but we do proclaim good news about it. And this good news, it fills the whole Catholic funeral mass which gathers us today. The good news that God has overcome death with an ever greater power. He has done something good with this thief. We heard St. Paul in the second reading say these words. We heard them in Spanish. I'll say them to you in English. He said, we know that if our earthly dwelling, a tent, should be destroyed, we have a building from God, a dwelling not made with hands, eternal in heaven. What an encouragement for us. That death, that unjust destroying thief has been outwitted, defeated, tricked. Somehow, for St. Paul, he's, that loss is gain. And that strange claim only makes sense for St. Paul because of Jesus, who on the night before he dies on the cross says to his disciples, in the words we just heard, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a place for you. Strange words coming from a man facing death. Because death is no place for any man. We're made for life. But the death of Jesus is not like any other death. Because it's also the death of the Son of God. His death does something. It fights back. It enacts a change. It changes loss from, to gain. The destruction of the body to the resurrection of the body from an end to a beginning. That's why Jesus says that his death and resurrection, what he goes to do, makes a place for us. It makes a home for us beyond this life. That's the hope at the heart of the Christian faith. It's the hope at the heart of this Catholic funeral mass where we are now, we that we celebrate for Deputy Ruiz. Two ways this victory over the death of the thief should be such a support for us today. First, even though death robs us indeed of so much, through Jesus' cross and resurrection, it never can rob us of love. I know throughout the past years, both professionally and personally, so many of you have been building in countless ways that relationship of love with Deputy Ruiz. This hope means that relationship of love survives death. It's stronger than death. And your love for him creates a bond that death cannot sever. Death cannot rob that. And so we, we thank God in this Mass for that enduring love, which is indeed a share in God's own love for him. I think that's reflected in the fact that that name, Juan, Johnny, it means God's gracious love. Second, for those imbued with this faith and this hope, death can finally never steal our hope. It can try, but it can't. Our unshakable hope that Deputy Ruiz is with God today, in heaven rejoicing in the gift of everlasting life, first promised to him in baptism. That's why I had the great blessing of blessing his body with holy water to call to mind those saving waters. And our hope, too, is that one day we, too, will join him in that place of utter joy and happiness where death can't take anything anymore. I love this a hope-filled prayer that we'll sing in just a few moments at the end of the funeral mass for Deputy Ruiz. May Christ, who called you, take you home, and angels lead you to Abraham. Receive his soul, O holy ones, Present him to God, most high. This hope, everybody, it's not just for the distant future. It's meant to sustain us now, today, and in the days to come. 
If I may say so, it's always seemed to me that those who spend their professional lives, like Deputy Ruiz, fighting against evil and injustice, fighting for uh, the innocent and the vulnerable, have a kind of resonance with the meaning of Jesus on the cross. Because the eyes of faith see that there he didn't run from evil, but ran toward it. Jesus on the cross knows that human life is worth fighting for. It's worth saving, despite the darkness that surrounds it, even despite the darkness within it. And so we marvel at the love that is willing to die on the cross at the hands of cruel men. Men whose eyes are filled with hatred and ignorance. Jesus is willing to die to be killed by the very people he serves in order to save them. And so we gather in the presence of Deputy Ruiz's body. And as we do so, we're really, in a way, at the foot of the cross. Which is the place of God's victory. The place where God robs death of everything it tries to take and gives even more. This is where God plunders death of its darkness and steals for us and for all our beloved dead the ever greater divine love and mercy. God steals for us on the cross life that never ends. Deputy Ruiz did not die alone because Jesus did not die alone. Jesus died under the gaze of his beloved father united in an unbreakable bond of love. And so Deputy Ruiz died not alone, but surrounded by the loving embrace and gaze of Jesus who said, Behold, I will be with you until the end of the ages. We know that doesn't take our pain away, it doesn't take our anger away, but it does give us confidence to take up our daily tasks Knowing that human life is worth fighting for, it is worth saving. We Catholics like to speak of the way of the cross. We're surrounded with the images of it here in the church. It means that the cross, suffering love, is the way forward. It's the path of love. It's the way to our surest home. So, dear friends, let's thank God together for the way Deputy Ruiz walked this path of love, the way of the cross, and together, we pray that he will enter into the fullness of this divine love. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. As we stand, we turn to Almighty God, praising him for the victory of his son through his cross and resurrection, and now offer him all of our prayers for our deceased beloved one and for all those who have died. The response to each intercession is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Juan, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord, our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the family and the friends of our brother Juan, 
that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend, Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us who are assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, you entrusted Juan to our care, and now you embrace him in your love. Take him into your keeping together with all who have died. Comfort us, your sorrowing servants, who seek to do your will and to know your saving peace. We ask all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated now for the preparation of the altar.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Juan, we beseech your mercy that he who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled, by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling tur turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. I invite you to please kneel. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church, be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. 
Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gift that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them, as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In your Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Lux eterna Noce a te is domine, cum sanctis tuis in eternum, quia pius es. In just a few moments, it's my privilege to invite all those Catholics who are prepared to receive Holy Communion to come forward and to do so. If you're not Catholic or not receiving Holy Communion today, Feel free to stay in your place to continue to pray for Deputy Ruiz and for his family. Thank you so much.
us for the life of the world. And if you eat of this bread, you shall live forever. You shall live forever. And I will of the Son of Man and drink of his blood and drink of his blood you shall not have life within you and I will Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Juan, who today has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, 
and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. My dear friends, before we go our separate ways, let us now take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our brother Juan in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Juan in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our brother forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. Jerusalem. 